and their wagons were not all elegant. They were just little push carts in many cases. Daddy Frank played the guitar and the French harp. Sister played ring and tambourine. Mama couldn't hear our pretty music. She read our lips and helped the family sing. That little band was all a part of living, and our only means of living at the time. And it wasn't like no normal family combo. Cause Daddy Frank, the guitar man, was blind. Frank and Mama counted on each other. Their one and only weakness made them strong. Mama drove the wagon for the family. And Frank made a living with a song. Home was just a camp along the trailway. A wagon bed was where we bedded down. Don't ever once remember going hungry. But I remember Mama cooking on the ground. Don't remember how they got acquainted. I can't recall just how it came to be. There had to be some special help from someone. And blessed be the one that let it be. Teddy Frank played the guitar and the French harp. Sister played the ring and tambourine. Mama couldn't hear our pretty music. She read our lips and helped the family sing. Thank you. How many people didn't survive the trip? They have no statistics, of course. But it's believed that some 20,000 died on the trail from disease, cholera, smallpox, measles, flu, etc. Many died from accidents and about 400 were killed by Indians. And it's estimated that about 400 Indians were killed by travelers. What happened to the Oregon Trail? It was in regular use from the early 1840s to the 1870s. When the Union Pacific completed the Transcontinental Railroad in 1869, travelers started taking the train to San Francisco and then went north by ship. However, wagon trains were still seen in the 1880s. After a half year journey of overcoming obstacles, sickness and losses of family and possessions, many of the travelers reached the Willamette Valley in Oregon for their new life. Part three, the Transcontinental Railroad. The story of the first Transcontinental Railroad was a combined effort of government and capitalism. While many are credited with its founding, who was the primary visionary who set the foundation for its creation? I gave you the answer there so you don't have to Google it. <laughs> Abraham Lincoln was the visionary. This man was amazing in so many respects, but he had worked on the railroad. He had been a railroad attorney in his early days. He understood what the railroad could do for this country. The first trains had begun to run in America in the 1830s along the East Coast. By the 1840s, the nation's railway networks extended throughout the East, South, and Midwest, and the idea of building a railroad across the nation to the Pacific gained momentum. The annexation of the California Territory following the Mexican-American War, the discovery of gold in the region in 1848, and statehood for California in 1850 further spurred the interest to unite the country as thousands of immigrants and miners sought their fortune in the West. Who were the game changers who accomplished the magnificent feat of the building of the Transcontinental Railroad? Abraham Lincoln, of course, was number one. Thomas Clark Durant, a very corrupt individual, I might add, 
Oaks Ames. These were the men who were the titans of industry. Leland Stanford, Theodore Judah, who was the architect, really, who really formulated the plan coming from west to east, and Collis P. Huntington. As I say, each of these are stories on their own, but generally these men were, let's say, slightly corrupt tyrants, but without their capitalistic endeavors and attitudes, it never would have happened. Abraham Lincoln was the 16th president of the United States and is remembered as the savior of the Union and the great emancipator of the slaves. But in this story, Lincoln also figures as an important friend of the Transcontinental Railroad. He was an ardent and longtime political champion of the railroad. With the election of Lincoln, the slave South made good on its threat of secession. In addition to precipitating the Civil War, secession ended the stalemate that stalled congressional action on a railroad. The Southern representatives were no longer around to insist that the route go through the South. Lincoln then was free to sign, in July of 1862, the Pacific Railroad Bill that put the federal government behind the transcontinental project. When he was assassinated in 1865, the nation lost a great leader, and the Transcontinental Railroad, still four long years from completion, lost one of its most valuable partisans. In 1862, Congress passed the Pacific Railroad Acts, which designated the transcontinental route and gave huge grants of lands for right-of-way. The legislation authorized two railroad companies, the Union Pacific and the Central Pacific, to construct the lines, one going from Omaha to the west, and of course the other coming from California east. I put me quarter of riches on, I put me quarter of riches on, work upon the railway. Fill me or re or re, -ay. fill me or re or re, -ay. fill me or re or re, -ay. work upon the railway. In 1842, I left the old land for the new, but that's the luck that brought me through to work upon the railway. 1843, just then I met sweet Molly McGee, a wonderful wife she's been to me while working on the railway. Fill me or re or re, -ay. fill me or re or re, -ay. fill me or re or re, -ay. I work upon the railway. It's packed to this and packed to that with nothing but an old cravat and nothing but an old straw hat while working on the railway. In 1849, the California hills look fine. We found some gold and left behind the workings of the railway. Fill me or re or re a fill me or re or re a fill me or re or re a to work upon the railway. Thank you. Beginning in 1863, the Union Pacific, employing more than 8,000 Irish, German, and Italian immigrants, built west from Omaha, Nebraska. The Central Pacific, whose workforce included over 10,000 Chinese laborers, built eastward from Sacramento, California. Each company faced unprecedented construction problems, mountains, severe weather, and the hostility of Native Americans. Since congressmen wrote the, wanted the road built quickly, they made two key decisions. First, they gave each line 20 alternate sections of land for each mile of track completed. Second, they gave loans, $16,000 for each mile of track on flat prairie land, $32,000 per mile for hilly terrain, and $48,000 per mile in the mountains. Oh, what an opportunity for corruption to prevail. And it did. The UP and CP then would compete, and the line that built the most miles would get the most cash and land. The railroad would be financed by selling this land. Since building fast brought in more cash than building efficiently, the two lines spent little time choosing routes. They just laid track and cashed in. Indian attacks caused the loss of hundreds of lives and further ran up the cost of building. 
The Cheyenne and the Sioux assaulted the road throughout Nebraska and Wyoming. They stole horses, damaged track, and scalped the workmen. The government sent extra troops along the line to help protect it. But after they left, the railroad workers often had to work in teams, with half of them standing guard and the other half working. The Donner Pass, which is still there in Truckee, California. That tunnel is still there. Opened in 1866, used by Abtrak for Western trips. By the end of 1868, it became obvious that the rival Union Pacific was going to win the great race into Utah. It would probably have tracks laid to the key city of Ogden before the Central Pacific could emerge from the Promontory Range north of Great Salt Lake. A feeling of excitement went throughout America as it seemed that the long dream of railroad, which was planned for completion, com completion in 1876 in the centennial celebration, it was completed in 1869, seven years ahead of schedule. That's the last government project to complete its schedule. <laughs> the Union Pacific did not win the race into Utah without enormous cost in money, materials, and lives. Although deaths by accidents were higher among the CP's Chinese, between 500 and 1,000, the UP lost the most workmen from exposure and from diseases contracted in the, quote, squalid dens of prostitution, unquote, that followed the cruise westward. The Transcontinental Railroad was a 1,912-mile continuous railroad line that connected the existing eastern U.S. from Omaha, Nebraska, with the Pacific Coast. The Coast-to-Coast -Coast Railroad connection revolutionized the country and made transporting passengers and goods considerably quicker and less expensive. The opening of the West helped to solve the lingering effects of the Civil War, but the westward movement expanded. The 300,000 Native Americans were threatened as were their source of food, clothing, and lodging, the buffalo. Before the Western expansion, it's believed the bluff numbered in the tens of millions. After expansion, it had been reduced to the thousands. The real game changers were the tens of thousands of laborers for both railroads who overcame every obstacle. The Chinese who conquered the Sierra Nevada mountains, the runaway black slaves and the newly freed blacks after the war ended, the Irish immigrants and all the other new Americans who accomplished the feat of connecting our country from the Atlantic to the Pacific. and the Golden Spike. Some reference material. There are wonderful books about Lewis and Clark and so on. These were my particular favorites. So 
written by Stephen Ambrose. Undaunted Courage, The Open. This is about Lewis and Clark. His book, Nothing Like It in the World, The Men Who Built the Transcontinental Railroad. This book by Dean Brown, who also <coughs> wrote Bury My Heart at Wounded Knee. The Ghost of Gold Mountain, about the Chinese. This is a great many series, went on for about five years. Hell on Wheels, about the towns that followed the railroad that would move along with the railroad. And if you haven't seen, this is the prequel to Yellowstone, called 1883 on Paramount Plus. It's only uh, 10 shows so far they're talking maybe about continuing. An amazing story. This is perhaps maybe the most authentic Western I have ever seen. Come and take a walk with me to this green and growing land. Walk through the meadows and the mountains and the sand. Walk through the valleys and the rivers and the plains. Walk through the sun.
Yes, 